What's up guys, Tommy Bowie here from Movie Rewind and welcome to Unboxing the Controversy. I'm joined by Matthew once again Hello. and today we'll be looking at Spider-Man 3. So without further ado, let's get into it. So, Spider-Man 3 was released in 2007. It was directed by Sam Raimi and stars Tobey Maguire in, in the main role. And this was probably one of the most anticipated Spider-Man films released so far. I think even though I was obviously six years old when this film came out, everyone was talking about it. It was like this big thing. And today it is the second highest grossing Spider-Man film. It is just been beaten by spider-man far from home however it's still the second highest grossing spider-man film so it's done well on there and to be honest the critic cons consensus at the time was that it got 63 percent on rotten tomatoes so it's still certified as fresh by critics however the audience score is 51 percent so this film is obviously quite controversial considering um, quite a large proportion of film goers really didn't like this film. Now, um, I first saw this on DVD with my dad because uh -huh. I didn't get to see it in the cinema. But I Matthew, I think you got to I see did. it in the cinema. I went on my birthday dressed up as Spider Man. <laughs> I remember we had I I went with Beefcake. He 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 was dressed in his I think probably just his back in the day. You it was just a flame shirt he used to always wear. I was dressed as Spider Man. But <laughs> oh, I wish I was there, but unfortunately I was not. We didn't know each other back then. Yep. It was a simpler time. It was a better time. <laughs> so anyway, this film is still highly regarded as one of the worst Spider-Man Um A lot oh, of no. people really don't like this film. I think it's fair to say uh, it disappointed a lot of Spider-Man fans. And of course it did lead to, it was the result of this film that Spider-Man 4 didn't get made because there was such a severe backlash um, from fans against this film. So um, I think first what we're going to do is just give our initial thoughts on this film, uh, what we think of it, and then we'll go into more detail about the good and bad. So I think I'm going to hand over to Matthew and ask his initial thoughts on this film. It's obviously very controversial to a lot of people. I thought the film, uh, well, back when I watched it, I very much enjoyed it. Being a young boy, seeing Spider-Man swing around, beating Venom on screen, <laughs> of course you're going to enjoy it. And kids, they, well, the kids, well, the kids at the time would have loved it, would have bought all the merchandise, Tony would have been happy. But um, as you've seen the film go on, I, um, I have to say, um, watching it, I still do find a lot of aspects I enjoy about it. I thought the film started off probably much stronger, like with the introduction of Sandman, the new Goblin, but then slowly you see things fall apart, uh, things don't quite make sense, things that you feel like have been rushed in, um, especially Venom. Venom was big rushing, which I'm sure we'll get on to the reason why Venom was rushed in, um, studio interference and all that, but I'm sure we'll touch on later. But... Yeah, I, there's, a, there's a lot of problems with the movie, but overall, it was enjoyable cinematic experience. It had, it has got a lot going for it. The CG was really good in it. Um, the CG on Santa at the time was superb. Yeah, but it had, it had a lot going for it in terms of like entertainment, on-screen entertainment, cinematography, and production values. Just the story fell apart, like probably halfway through the movie, I'd say. Mm. Yeah, I mean, when I first saw it on DVD, I was obviously, I really enjoyed it because as a young boy, you're innocent and just seeing the action scenes and Spider-Man flying around, you're like hyped for it. I mean, this is the first Spider-Man film I ever saw. I hadn't seen the previous two before this film. So um, I enjoyed this film, but I, I do have to agree with you. And re-watching it yesterday, there are certain points in this movie when the film kind of dipped with a lot of controversial films it kind of just goes 
it nose dives into just kind of obscurity and then it's terrible with this film it kind of at different parts goes down a bit lower it's it's kind of like i don't know there was so much jammed into this film and this film's only just over two hours long so there's a lot of stuff they were trying to do in this one film. And I have heard that some executives working on this film actually wanted to have it in two parts. They wanted Spider-Man 3 part one and part two because they said there was just so much that Sony especially wanted in this film that they were, there was just, there was no, there was no hope in creating a coherent story which had all these different elements in it. And of course, um, if any of you guys don't know this, Sam Raimi originally wanted uh, to focus on Sandman and the New Goblin as villains. Uh, Sony really wanted Venom in the film because they thought Spider-Man fans do like Venom, but they thought, well, we need to have Venom in this film. So Sam Raimi had to change a lot of stuff in order to incorporate Venom. And yeah, many people at the time and now really don't like how they did Venom in this film. So I think we're going to go into some details about what we think works in this film, what we think doesn't work in this film. So, uh, Matthew, is there anything you like about this film? You know, any any specifics that you enjoy? Um, I'm, I'm not sure. Like, um, I don't know about stand-up moments, which I could say, yeah, that made the movie for me. Um, certainly not anywhere towards the last part. I don't know. It's it's hard. It's hard to say. <laughs> but I'd say when I rewatched it, I think I think the main thing I found, or when like the first part this film kind of goes down, is is when it starts. Harry Osborn is kind of the villain, and you know he's he's the new goblin, and he wants to attack and kill Peter Parker. And I thought that was actually okay because that followed on from Spider Man Two. But then what happens? They have this action scene, and then he knocks his head and loses his memory and that just feels that feels so stupid because he automatically becomes less compelling a character but the previous two spider-man films you've been building up harry osborne as like the villain you know he's becoming this villain he's got had all this development and then all of a sudden he loses his memory and yeah back to normal and th- that just felt stupid that felt like they wanted to focus on it more, but they just they didn't want to focus it for like forty five minutes of the film. So they just thought, we'll just have him lose his memory, and and that'll be fine. You know, there are no worries, no worries, guys. We're Sony. We can do what we want because we own the rights to Spider. man I personally think that the stuff San Raimi wanted to focus on in this movie gets better treatment. I think Sandman is a good villain. At the off, yeah. you understand his motives and the CGI used in the Sandman scene, especially when he's coming together as Sandman. Um, that's a beautiful scene. Uh, CGI really strong there. Still holds up quite well, even today. However, I think after Sandman's defeated in the sewer and kind of turns into water and disappears, then you lose all development for his character. And that's what I don't get about this film. Every villain is kind of not a villain throughout the entire film. They're like villains in section. You know, at first, the new go- new Goblin's the villain. Then he loses his memory, so forget about him. <laughs> then Sandman's the villain. Then he's defeated, forget about him. I just feel like they, they didn't have all the villains connected properly. No. They just felt like multiple threats and when they weren't needed they were kind of written out of the script for a while i mean uh, what what are your thoughts on sandman because he he's obviously the most developed of the villains in my opinion i, I did enjoy but... sandman for the portion of the film he was in well certainly the first half he was in um of course great character design um some they had some good action sequences with him um good fight scene between spider-man um now the the bit where we see Sandman just wiped out and, well, we f- we think killed, you know, emo Peter Parker comes along, tries to beat him up for, well, for reasons we'll get into later in terms of mm. Peter's character development. 
in the story. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, but then later on, I think Sandman's arc just went bleh. <laughs> mm. Especially with when it's they like use Venom. Yeah, it's like they just forgot about him. Mm. They they kind of just brought him back for the final fight scene. And that that was it. He didn't have anything to go on. And I don't. I mean, let's get into the main the main story arc of this film, which is obviously Black. Spider-Man storyline, yeah, which of course in the comics is and TV series is a massive storyline which features across multiple installments of the comic, and they tried to cram it in in a two-hour-long film. Yep. Now, for me personally, when it start when he becomes the black suit Spider-Man, I enjoy it up until the fight scene with Sandman in the sewer because when he's fighting Sandman in the sewer I feel like that that that's very well done with the black suit you can sense the rage he's behaving irrationally he's fighting Sandman and supposedly kills him but when he comes out of that sewer and he looks in the mirror and all of a sudden goes with his hair to put it up <laughs> that's when it's like oh no <laughs> it's, it's all like, downhill yeah, from feel that here. rage that's edgy boy boy <laughs> This this film handles the Black Suit Spider-Man so badly because it just makes him an emo, you know. Yeah. It just, just, I don't get it because because Sam Raimi's a massive comic book fan, so you think he would have read that. Wait a minute, this is not the Black Suit Spider-Man supposed to be more aggressive and dark than the origin than the normal Spider-Man. But this is just like he becomes a douchebag. Well, I, I, suppo- I suppose looking like that you that you hate your parents and had a terrible upbringing is dark and depressing. <laughs> well, yeah, but it's just, I mean the infamous the infamous dance. Yeah, that's not. The, yeah, th- that was. That's that that's be. when this trilogy kind of fell apart. Mm. I don't know. It's just written. It's written so poorly, you know, and I, I honestly don't know what was going through their heads at the time. You can kind of sense the director doesn't really understand this storyline and he's just doing it for the producers yeah. and the studio, which, yeah. which because it's, it's such a large portion of the movie, it's, it's the main story arc for Spider-Man in this film. So... God, <laughs> they just they do it so poorly. No, oh, yeah, and yeah, I yeah. mean the reasons why also pisses you off as well. <laughs> yeah, because I mean of the story Sam Raimi wanted to actually tell, we couldn't properly well get to see. No, we couldn't see it. I mean, as I've already said, the black suit Spider Man with fight with Sam Man in the sewer, I enjoy. The fight scene between Peter Parker and Harry Osborn, I think, is done quite well. You know, that's quite dark. And it's a surprisingly, the action scenes with Black Suit Spider-Man are quite good. Yeah. But it's all the other stuff which isn't good. It's the stuff showing him darker just doesn't make sense. And to be honest, I didn't actually really like peter parker in this film no. i found him quite unlike they make him quite even before he's got the black suit on him he's quite unlikable he's quite arrogant and up himself and thinks everyone loves him i don't know that just such a departure from the previous two films mm. it doesn't make sense to have him become that out of character yeah i mean and obviously and i think you've got something to say about this when they introduce eddie brock and oh. and Venom, it's just I mean Topher Venom Grace character development. Okay, ass. um, technically Eddie Brock has a reason to dislike Spider Man because he lost mm. his job. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. That's apart from that. <laughs> yeah. There's not. There's no, no character development to Venom whatsoever. He's just suddenly depressed. Eddie Brock sitting there going. 
Uh, oh, oh, I can't take photos of the Daily Bugle no more. We sad, sad, sad. <laughs> so somehow he's at the same church zone, the right convenient location as Peter Parker was at the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <very> somehow, <laughs> and then he gets the symbiote. And uh, this portrayal of Eddie Brock, I don't think was a good one at all. Like that was no. that's not Eddie Brock. <laughs> I I think Topher Grace is a good actor. Yeah. I'm I'm not criticizing the actor, but he was miscast. Mm. He sh- he shouldn't have been cast in this role. You know, Eddie Brock's supposed to be a bit more like Tom like Tom Hardy. Yeah. You know, <laughs> a bit a bit more. A bit more I, don't, it, I don't know. This the Eddie Brock in this film is just like blames Peter Parker because he found out he was faking a photo, and it's like, well, I'm sure. After a while, everyone would have been able to figure that out. You know, there must have been, there must be professionals out there who would realize that that's a, obviously a fake photo. Mm. So I don't know why you thought he was going to get away with this. It just, it just seems stupid. And obviously, when he becomes Venom, the the design is all right. You know, the it looks okay. Good. But but what is Venom? Venom's just like this guy that fights spider-man that's all yeah. he is there's there's nothing else and half the time especially in the final action scene you don't even see venom's venom's face because it just kind of disappears and it's eddie brock's face mm. it's like and that pissed me off because it's like right if you're gonna give us a bad venom at least give us a well-designed venom don't just kind of clear it off and well, we're only going to show it for about two minutes made absolute no oh this film this film <laughs> it's just it's a mess it seems to be so much going on and nothing really kind of adds up you know when you when you make a film the storyline is supposed to go coherently and kind of come together everything's supposed to come together with this it just doesn't it's just like venom finds sandman and says Hey, do you want? We 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 have the same enemy. Let's go and kick his ass. And, and Sandman, despite, despite Sandman, you know, just wanting to be with his daughter and only needing money, he then said, "Yeah, okay, I'll kind of hurt all these innocent people for no for no apparent reason <laughs> for no apparent reason." <laughs> oh, it's yeah. You have you got any more? Yeah, Venom. Venom had probably more character development in the Spider-Man free game, <laughs> even though that was terrible. Probably. <laughs> you obviously um, spend more time but the, the, <laughs> the, the, any more to add well the reason for this film being such a mess is of course you'd think Sony would have learnt the lesson after this but of course they didn't it's nope. studio <laughs> interference of forcing Sam Raimi to do things he didn't want to do um, it's fun fact that we would have got a Sam Raimi Spider-Man 4 in fact um, Sam Raimi was actually on board to do it he was developing, he, he was thinking he was going to have like the Vulture, I can't exactly remember, but he wanted like the Vulture as a villain. But then Sony came along again, wanted him to interfere, saying, no, no, put all this in as well. So at, at the end, Sam Raimi just yeah. left. And well, the whole, the big thing of this film was forcing Venom into the story. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, ob- obviously, to introduce Venom, you had to introduce the Black Suit Spider Man. And obviously, that's base. That is basically uh, Spider-Man's story arc and character development for the entire film. So anything else Sam Raimi had planned to do, he couldn't really do it because everything was on this black suit Spider-Man and the Venoms. Mm. Now, as you said, Sam Raimi was planning on doing Spider-Man Four. He was actually, I've heard rumors that there was they were actually planned to do Spider-Man films up until Spider-Man Six. They were like planning three more films. Yeah, I think. And you're right. I don't know why Sony all of a sudden started interfering because with Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2, they just let a director and a production team make a film. And the su- and it was successful because you allowed the director to have a free hand and just make magic. With this film, it's like Sony weren't confident that Sam Raimi could pull it off again. They well, were like, well, we need, not we need that, more stuff money. in there. They wanted to make more money. If I they get see all, that. They but... see all they what they think what sells tickets. Big lots of villains, 
what what was what was sell what's going to sell lots of merchandise? Just one villain? Or no? Let's put more villains in so we can sell more toys to the kids. Yeah, Little yeah, I, I, that's a good point there. But but the problem films which have multiple villains in, especially three villains, are usually good because there's just too many villains. Yeah. But the reason yeah. the first film and the second film work so well is because you only have one villain, yeah. and the villains are well. Yeah well developed you understand their mode and they're seen quite a lot with this film none of the villains are really present throughout the entire film as we've said sandman disappeared harry osborne is kind of knocked unconscious and, and by the way on a side note to that why the hell did they make harry osborne new goblin he should have been the hobgoblin that would have been a great opportunity especially as in in the opening scene where he, you go in through his lab there's like a hobgoblin mask sitting right there. It's like, why couldn't they have just made him the hobgoblin? Why mm. did they have to make him new? Go- I think the des- personally, I think the design of new goblin is pretty crap. It's, it's bland. Yeah. It's it's not got anything to it. It it just looks average. I can't even see kids just, picking that up as it a. It just looks a like pick- going snowboarding. Yeah, looking it does. Decent. And. And then, as we said, Venom just shows up at the end. It's like, hey, guys, action scene, because, you know, yeah, we need to have an no action scene. Yeah, proper stakes with Venom, to be honest. No, or he's emotional just kind of there. Apart from, or we got to save Mary Jane, the damsel in distress. <laughs> yeah, we got to save Mary Jane Watson again for the third time. <laughs> that and was I'm the pretty only sure stake that, there yeah. was. Yeah, but, but I'm Venom pretty sure that Venom wasn't this person... big overarching villain that was going to cause, like, death to like hundreds of people cause uh, like a like a big event it was just oh he's going to take yeah. Mary Jane away again <laughs> and I think that's the thing every film in, in a series should raise the stakes in the first film Green Goblin takes Mary Jane hostage yeah but it's like this big thing about him wanting Spider-Man to choose is he a hero or is he going to save the girl in the second film, it's about Doc Ock building this machine and destroying the city. So the stakes are clearly raised because it's not just one person, it's an entire city. Hmm. In this film, it's it's back to one person again. Yeah. And I'm, I, apparently Kirsten Dunst was really unhappy that she was being made the damsel in distress again because she does give a good performance. You know, she's not a bad actor. But the character's just written as, I scream. <laughs> Because I can't be saved, I'll just scream. <laughs> just, I don't know. It's it's like they didn't know how to end this film. It's like we have all these components, we don't really know how to end it. So we're just gonna we're just gonna kidnap Mary Jane again, and then have Spider Man and Harry team up to to fight the villain. I, the, okay. This isn't the worst Spider Man film. I have seen yeah, worse. I've seen worse. Trust me, I have. I have seen worse Spider-Man films, and it's still got a very unique style. Of course, it's set in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man universe, so you cannot say it's not unique. And as you said, you know, you you can't say some of the villains aren't exactly like the comics. Sandman, you know, designed just like out of the comics. Hmm. I, there's just studio interference led to this film having too many villains and i think that just that just caused problems so i think now we're going to talk about why this film is is so contra- why do you, some people cuz obviously some people really love this film and in the last few years you've really seen a lot of people look back and say this film was not that bad. It was actually quite good. We enjoyed it. Do you think they've actually got a point? Or do you think it's just like nostalgia? Or, oh, look, it's Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. He's great. He's the best Spider-Man ever. You know, we've got to love this film. So what are your thoughts on Probably that? Probably because they don't want to tarnish the, the films that came before it. Because <laughs> when you had what is probably deemed probably one of the best superhero movies of all time come before it, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to to accept to swallow that pill that your the best, like one of the best superhero films of all times, just being preceded by a part of dog shit. I I think some people have got a point 
because uh, unlike the Amazing Spider-Man Two, and it, it it's not set in. It's not trying to build up other films. You know, you could even say Homecoming and Far From Home are trying are referencing loads of MCU films are kind of in that universe. Spider-Man Three is its own film. It's it's not trying to build up another film. I mean, you can't say this film is trying to build up Spider-Man 4 because it's not. It's just trying to be it's just it's just a film. Yeah. Whether it's a good film or not is another thing, which I personally think it's an average film. There's there's a lot of good element there's there's good elements in, it, but it it just it just can't get together with the story. The, the story and plot is the main problem for this film. Yeah. I, I think you're going to see more people look back and say this film's great. Personally, because those people have never really liked the MCU Spider-Man films and they're not happy that it's... They're not happy, you know, that Iron Man's in their Spider-Man film because <laughs> they just want Spider-Man there. That's the MCU for you, though. Oh, yeah, that is, that is the MCU. And this came from a time of cinematic universe building as well. Yeah. I think that's why some people like this film because it was before a time of cinematic universes yeah. where they were just they were just comic book films you could just watch them and not have to worry about anything else happening in the universe. And as you see, you're probably right because this film came after Spider Man Two, but people just struggled to accept that <laughs> this ended the trilogy on a bad note. Mm. I think when you've had two, when you've had two of the films before this, which people consider, you know, the biggest, some of the biggest comic book films of all time, you know, did loads for the genre as a whole. And then you've got this, which kind of did nothing yeah. for anyone. <laughs> I think that's where you get the controversy from. So uh, I think we're going to head into final thoughts. So good on, good movie, bad movie, no view on it. It was all right. <laughs> it was all right. Just, they, finished it's a shame they finished a good trilogy on a bad note yeah i'd, I'd agree with you on that it's just it's a disappointing conclusion <laughs> disappointment um, i i i can i can the only guilty thing i can say about it is i don't mind the final scene where peter parker's dancing with mj and it kind of ends i, f- I found it's like it's it ends. It feels quite final. It's not like they left it open for Spider-Man Four. It kind of, it kind of ends, and you're okay with that. You're okay. It's ended, <laughs> but it's not the way you wanted it to end. Not, not in the slight. Yeah. So, uh, thanks for watching this, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. This is the first instalment of Unboxing the Controversy. It's a new series where we look at films which are very controversial and try and decide why they are so controversial as well as give our opinions on them i think in the future we might be doing the transformers films which oh yes that will be opinion. fun <laughs> between story and entertainment values yes but well, they'll be fun especially for me because as matthew knows uh we sh- we share quite different views on those I know, films i know you love the fifth one though oh yeah yeah that's just, that's groundbreaking <laughs> that film uh, really did the future of cinema. That's mm. what that film is. Yeah. So uh, cinema, please frankly, remember to yeah. like, comment, and subscribe in order to receive great and maybe even improved quality content in the future. I'd like to thank Matthew for being here because uh, obviously he didn't have to be. You leave that the pictures again. Have... No. <laughs> no. We might see more of Pigeon soon. Who knows? He might be back. Who knows? But Who knows? If I get bored again, Pigeon might be So uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in another one. See ya.